south of Savannah, the waves of the Atlantic break on the shores of the Golden Isles of Georgia. Once the rendezvous of buccaneers, later seat of rich manorial plantations, these islands have character and charm. Witness the picturesque ruins of the old slave hospital, where Negro slaves were treated more than a century ago. Westward, the marshes of Glynn and the Sydney Lemire Oak, under which the poet sat while he wrote the songs that have made these marshes famous. On the main, its harbor sheltered by the sea island, is the old town of Brunswick, county seat of Glynn County. Rich in traditions, important port of the Old South, thriving seafood and industrial center of the new. Here are important crab and shrimp fisheries, canneries to preserve the catch for shipment. One of the South's largest wood pulp mills. A modern plant for distillation of pine oil and other wood byproducts. A thriving veneer and box industry, all together giving employment to thousands of workmen. Brunswick, center of a rural area, is typical of communities throughout America. Here a demonstration in syphilis control can be carried on. A test program for work in other places, south or north. The United States Public Health Service joined with the health departments of Georgia and Glynn County to set up such a project. This is not the story of syphilis, the disease. It is the story of public health organization to stamp out syphilis. In Brunswick, the work resembles that of any city. Private doctors are given free drugs to treat all their cases of syphilis, so that those who can afford to pay but little may go to their own doctors. Thus, the private physician treats those who can afford to pay at all. At the health department, a modern public clinic treats 275 patients each week free of charge. Systematic efforts have been made to find syphilis, bring it to treatment. Blood tests are a part of school health examination. Every child here has already been tested. In small communities in the outlying region, the story is the same. Here at St. Simon's, 35 patients come to the clinic each week. and rural doctors receive free drugs and financial aid for the treatment of poorer patients, just as do the doctors of the town. But beyond the towns, beyond the doctor's offices, beyond even roads, are the woods. This is a rural land, a land of forest, fewer than 10 people to the square mile, deep in the piney woods. How will one reach these people? How reach those who work at country sawmills, who gather gum from the pine trees and tend the turpentine still? Here are people who have neither means for travel to urban centers nor leisure to travel. The health officer must reach these two if he is to meet his responsibility for the protection of the community. If this mountain will not come to Mohammed, Mohammed must go to the mountain. Hence, a mobile clinic that travels throughout three counties, Camden, McIntosh, and Glynn. Let's follow its journeys day by day. Monday, 107 miles, 106 patients. Tuesday, 110 miles, 129 patients. Wednesday, 102 miles, 118 patients. Thursday, 40 miles, 40 patients. Friday, 100 miles, 90 patients. Saturday, 60 miles, 44 patients. For the week, 519 miles, 527 patients at 24 clinics. This silver top is the symbol of the service. Along the road, 
The clinic itself becomes a bus to bring patients who live at intermediate points to the treatment center. The clinic stop, the patients gather. Next to church, the biggest event of the week. Fine syphilis, bring it to treatment. That is the story of control. The treatment renders the patient non-infectious, stops the spread of the disease through the community. It's a far cry from the swift and shining trailer to the ox cart, but many come to the clinic in this way, while many more come on foot, some walking 10 miles or more for treatment, once a week for 70 weeks. They gather at that rural forum, the country store, to compare notes on this new contribution to the life of the community. The school bus serves in a new capacity. It brings more patients to the clinic. Doctors on wheels. The clinical methods of the finest hospitals reach out to serve a rural line. Inside the trailer is a completely equipped clinic. Electric sterilizers, refrigerator, fans and lights are fed by a 110 volt generator in the tow car. No time is wasted in setting up for work. Three minutes after arrival, treatment can begin. The clinic serves as a health center not only for syphilis. This boy is being immunized against typhoid fever. At crowded stops, the county nurse sets up her stand nearby. In the forward part of the trailer, blood is taken for laboratory tests. Arsphenamin is administered. Two patients may be treated at once. Here a specimen of blood is taken for a test. Arsphenamin injected into the blood kills the germ of syphilis and the patient can no longer transmit the disease to others. Each patient gets simply written detailed instructions so that the illness will be fully understood. Behind the curtain in the rear of the trailer is a complete examination room with its own equipment and sterilizer. Here, bismuth is administered. Bismuth prevents the tragic relapses of heart and brain. At Health Department Headquarters in Brunswick, dark field examinations are performed. A little serum from the first sore is examined under the microscope. This is the earliest possible diagnosis for syphilis. The earlier treatment is begun, the surer the cure. It would take 3,500 of these syphilis germs laid end to end to make an inch. Spirochita pallida, a killer at large. At Way Cross, 60 miles from Brunswick, Georgia has a modern branch laboratory. Here blood tests are performed for the Tri-County Project. 
tubes filled with blood specimens come from the trailer, from the Brunswick Clinic, and from private physicians. An automatic pipette measures serum into test tubes for the CON test. Trained laboratory technicians are essential. Laboratories can't afford to make mistakes. Let's see the result. Negative, no syphilis. Negative, no syphilis. Positive reaction. Note the heavy particles in the tube. That means syphilis. But one must be very sure. Let us double check with a Wasserman test. That is another blood test for syphilis. Technically, a little different from the car. Let's see what it will show. A milky fluid like this in the tube on the right would mean syphilis. The clear tube is a check tube. And here are the tests. Watch the tube on the right. Negative, no syphilis. Negative, no syphilis. Positive. Here our case of syphilis is verified. Even the layman can see the difference in these two tubes. The project is organized for finding cases and holding them in treatment. It takes 70 weeks to ensure a cure for syphilis. Even with free treatment, it is not always easy to keep patients coming week after week. The trailer helps, but there are four follow-up workers, two white and two colored. The house-to-house -house canvas has proved also a most effective means of getting blood specimens. Behind the project, too, is education. One must carry this story to the people. Midwives deliver 400 babies a year in these counties. Well trained by the health department, they are licensed by the state. Here they learn about the blood test in actual demonstration. They carry forth the story and bring mothers in for prenatal blood tests. The grocery man wraps up the clinic announcement with every purchase. The country store shares a place among its tobacco signs for clinic handbills. Wherever the workers go, they tell the story of the clinic to willing ears. How bad blood makes people sick. How it destroys heart and brain. How it makes babies die. How the blood test finds it. And how the treatment, if taken long enough, is certain cure. The blood test serves a double purpose. First, it is a dragnet for syphilis. Second, it is an educational device. Blood specimens are taken in the turpentine wood at factory gates, on the shrimp wharves, at the docks of the porgy fishermen. The man who has seen the blood test loses his fear. The man who hasn't had one wants it. Everyone talks about it. The blood test becomes a demonstration and a symbol. Youth faces its problem more directly, honestly, spontaneously than did its father. Here, the blood test carries its message to a country dance hall. But the greatest help comes from the churches. Pastors are ever willing and glad to cooperate. They urge their people to join in the program. They tell them of the disease which threatens health and life and the generation yet unborn. They urge
urge that the message will be carried forth to the countryside, that all may know and walk in the light of health. They themselves take the blood test as a demonstration and urge their parishioners to follow them. Such is the story of a community mobilized, a community which met syphilis with the weapons of medicine and modern public health. Whatever you may do in your community, in these three counties of southeastern Georgia, the days of syphilis are numbered. Syphilis will be the next great plague to go. Children, be your wife.